Good morning out there in Radio Land. This is Radio Pastor Concepcion Munguia, and you're listening to Know the Truth of the Word broadcast. And tonight I'm going to be talking about something recently that we discussed in our ministry, namely in our Sunday night or Sunday evening services, rather. We, from time to time, have discussions where it's open forum, uh, acts whatever you will, and you're welcome to come to that, of course. Uh, those of you who live in the greater Los Angeles area are welcome to come. The address, of course, is 1957 Logan Side Drive, Los Angeles, California, 90047. I hope that you grab a pen and paper. I'll give that address in just a few more moments. But like I was saying, we sometimes have on our Sunday evening services uh, an open forum where one is able to come and ask very difficult and interesting questions. <laughs> and I think any ministry that doesn't answer the questions or at least attempt to is doing the Christians or the laymen a disservice. Pastors should be able to answer the hard questions as far as revealed theology. This does not mean that the pastor knows everything, but the word of God contains every answer man needs. All that God would give unto us has been incorporated into those 66 books. In fact, the Bible is an encyclopedia. But let's get to what we were talking about that I want to share with you all. Someone asked uh, accordingly that there was, well, she had told us that she had watched a program where there was a gentleman that was resurrected in somewhere in Nigeria, and he claimed to have died. He died in a car accident, and uh, God took him to heaven and then took him down into hell. And there in hell, the angel told him that this would be his lot because uh, he had not forgiven his his wife and because of unforgiveness uh, God did not the father did not forgive him and so the series went on and on and on or whatever the case but the question was will that unforgiveness towards her or to him towards his wife would that hinder him from walking into eternity and so my response is be will be our lesson tonight in fact when we look at that scripture, of course, when Jesus says that uh, if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you yours, that scripture in its context has nothing to do with salvation. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, he died for all past, present, and hopefully not too many future sins. This does not mean that the Christian has a license to sin or to go get one of those get-out-of-jail-free cars from Monopoly. No. The Christian is supposed to maintain a desire for righteousness and grieve over their sins that they occasionally, sometimes they stumble into, or sometimes you habitually do things. But the Christian is not supposed to make a lifestyle of sin. So we're not teaching antinomianism. Antinomianism, in fact, the definition deals with grace covers everything. Pretty much it's, it's lawless living. You can just live how any way you want. We're not teaching that tonight. No, 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 no. We believe in a standard of righteousness, yes. But let's say, hypothetically speaking, a Christian does make a mistake. Well, First John chapter 1 tells us that he has an advocate with the Father, or rather that he can come to Christ and he can ask to be cleansed. And the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm saying, will be able to cleanse him as he confesses his fault. So when one sins, it doesn't necessarily destroy their relationship with God. It breaks fellowship, but it does not sever you completely from the Lord and what I mean by that every time you make a mistake that does not mean or sin rather let's just use the term sin every time you sin it's not as though God erases your name out of the Lamb's Book of Life most people live with this mindset that I'm saved I'm not saved. I guess they go through the, the garden and they get a, a tulip or whatever the case and they pick the flower, the daisy or whatever. Oh, they, you know I used to do when you, when, when you were probably in, in, in high school and you had a, someone you thought that loved you and you would say, oh, well, uh, he, he loves me or she loves me and she loves me not. She loves me, she loves me not. It's not that you're saying uh, I'm saved and I'm not saved. I'm saved and I'm not saved. It doesn't work that way, ladies and gentlemen. Some people are living in fear that every time they sin, rather, or make a mistake, uh, or do something that is not consistent, that immediately God exits them out of the, the call of God, or rather the inheritance of salvation. It doesn't work that way. So to hear this account about this great testimony, which I believe that sounds pretty good, but according to the Bible, that's not accurate. Because let me ask you a question. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, someone uh, was brutally raped, 
and they were uh, bleeding to death. And in their last final words, uh, they're asking God to avenge them. And they are hoping, they're angry, they're mad, and they are, they are not at that time uh, exhibiting love. They want to have reconciliation, or rather they want, justif- they, they, they want their, 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 their ailment to, to be made right. They want the offender, rather I'm trying to, to convey to you, they want the offender to, to be brought to justice. They want justice. And that person dies with anger in their heart. Now, we can find many scriptures that says that anger is a sin. In the sense where if it's unjust, hence the Bible says if you're angry with your brother without a cause. But here we have someone who's angry with the cause, like David. In fact, when you read Psalms, especially Psalm 35, David says to, uh, to the Lord, Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. So he's asking God to avenge him and to justly bring recompense to the wrong that was done unto him. Now, some in the church would say, well, baby, if you die and you still got hatred in your heart, you're going to hell. Shall one sin stop you, although Jesus died on the cross for all of your sins? The question is, did he pay for all of your sins or not? Certainly, he paid for all sins. Hence, he said when he was about to expire, it is finished. And the word to telestide there means paid in full. So every time one sins, it doesn't, doesn't mean that Jesus gets back on the cross and say, well, I got to pay for that one too. Either he paid it all 2,000 years ago or he didn't. And so to say that one sin will, will, will stop you or, uh, or, or halt you from the presence of God, especially of that of not dealing uh, with his wife in a correct manner, I, I find fault with that because there is no one in the world sinlessly perfect. There's something wrong with all of us. In fact, if you have a good pastor, he's telling you about you. He's talking about you in his sermons every Wednesday and every Sunday. And if you turn on any true, genuine minister of the Lord, they're also telling you about you. (laughs) So as we grow in the faith, as we grow in knowledge and wisdom and in understanding, God is more and more breaking off those things in our life that will not be for edification of his body you understand so he begins to prune and purge us and purify us so when i think about how many people today are not allowing the holy spirit to 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 illuminate them to understand the scriptures they're living in in a very defeated christian life and they're afraid that oh i made a mistake i got to get saved again and this is what causes many people to go get baptized 10 20 30 times how many times are you going to get baptized i mean good grief Is it in the baptism or is it in your repentance? Did you stop being saved? I mean, come on now. Let's think about this theologically. Was Peter not saved, although he denied Jesus in the sense that he did not want to be associated with him? Jesus comes to restore him, doesn't he? So did Jesus still know him? Yes. And at times when you look at your life, you have not been the best of Christians. Maybe you didn't pick up the Bible or go to church last Sunday. Does that automatically mean that you're not saved? I mean, come on now. Let's not be so legalistic. The God that we serve is so gracious and he is so kind. He is so merciful. The prodigal son is a great example of mercy and grace. The father does not send anyone to go get the prodigal son, but he does allow someone Or rather, he allows the prodigal son to come to himself, and then the prodigal son goes back. Now, was the prodigal son still the son? Yes. But he was out of fellowship. Interesting. So, although one may be in the pig pen, this does not mean that you're completely X'd out of your covenant relationship with with the father, because he will draw you back. Now, how can I illustrate this more? Well, there are many of you that are listening that have made lots of mistakes. And the problems with many of us here that are listening is that we will shoot down someone else for their mistakes and not looking at how many times God has been so gracious and merciful to keep us. And you would like to have believed that when you were caught gossiping or caught not paying your tithe that you still were saved. I mean, let's think about that. So when this man speaks about how he got upset with his wife and that uh, certainly he um, uh, was mad at her and he probably said some things he shouldn't have said and he died, that would not stop someone from going to the kingdom of God. Hence the Bible says there's a time to love and a time to hate. I mean, we always want to, most folks, just take the loving part. 
But there are times you're going to be mad. There are times you're going to get beside yourself and maybe say the wrong thing. But that doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit does not live on the inside of you. Yes, he may be grieved. Yes, he may be quenched. But he's still going to deal with you, bringing you into fellowship. I mean, maybe you're a parent and you've had some bad kids. And I'm pretty sure there were times you wanted to do some things to them. But you were patient and kind to chastise them, to rebuke them. I mean, if you think about it, Jesus said those whom he loves, he chastens and he rebukes. Does that mean only one time he's going to rebuke them? So in your life, no, you're going to make a lot of mistakes and you've got a lot of more mistakes to make and a lot of other wrong to do. But still, in the midst of all that, the Bible says where sin abound, grace much more than abounded. So am I preaching that one can do whatever they want to do? Absolutely not. What I'm saying is get a clear understanding of what sanctification truly is because the moment you get saved the moment rather the Holy Spirit draws you to Christ and Christ accepts you and he begins to reside in your heart you're instantly justified let me give you an example about this in the Old Testament in the book of Genesis you find Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness so Abraham was justified now did Abraham go on to lie Yes. Did Abraham go on and he get hooked up with that black woman named Hagar and make a baby? Yes. Now, did Abraham stop being saved when he made those mistakes? No, because God would use Abraham as an example for you and I, that although someone can, can make a mistake, or rather, let me get this, say this the right way, sin, this does not automatically X them out of the faith. For example... Look at David, one of the greatest psalmists who wrote, as we all know, the 23rd Psalm, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And he would later go on from there, the greatest psalmist, the greatest songwriter of the Old Testament, to get down with Bathsheba. And he would say, Lord, take not your Holy Spirit away from me, which means that the Holy Spirit was still there. It didn't leave him automatically. Here's my point. The Bible declares, though a man sinneth, he shall not be utterly cast away. So although you fall, a just man falls seven times. Well, many of us have fallen more than seven times. Some of you may be still wrestling with doing certain things. Nevertheless, you don't want to do it. And you're like Paul, who was building churches, or maybe as Paul was preaching and he was speaking in tongues and had the ability to lay hands on folks, and he said within his own life in, in Romans chapter 7 that the things that he wanted to do, he found, him, he found himself not being able to do. And the very thing he did want to do, he found himself doing. Was Paul saved? Who oh, he has some issues, my dear friends, that we don't really know what it was. But nevertheless, it's called the Christian struggle. So every Christian will be struggling with this here flesh until the day Jesus comes down and splits the sky and gives us a regenerated body. But in the meantime, we are trying to persevere and endure by building or allowing God, allowing God's word to build us to become stronger and more equipped and being more keen and aware of the tricky and cunning devices of Satan. So. As I go back to maybe Abraham for a moment, you'll find in Abraham's life that towards the latter chapters of his uh, life, he wasn't telling lies anymore. He was built in the faith, which what I mean is this. As a Christian grows, they become more and more holy and righteous. They become more godly. They start mimicking or rather reflecting the very image of God. Likewise, you. It's a process, y'all. So stop condemning yourself, beating yourself over the head. Certainly, yes, you've done wrong. But remember, you can come to Jesus. He told the woman that was caught in adultery, go and sin no more. Stop doing what you're doing. Yes, don't get caught up going around in circles. That's a very miserable Christian experience. But you've got to put your faith in Jesus and what he did at the cross. For he said, I have overcome the world. And if we are in him, we too are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. This is your radio pastor, Prophet Concepcion Munguia. And of course, if you want to talk to me a little bit more about this issue, maybe you agree or disagree. Hey, bring it on. The number, of course, 323-381-6449. Once again, 323-381-6449. And we love you and God bless you. And we'll see you, or rather you'll hear us next week. God bless.